Welcome to another presentation from Online Horse College. Hi, this is Glennis Cox. Welcome to Online Horse College. This is your orientation. Within your orientation, we're going to go through a few things, such as submitting assessments, basic horse safety, working with computers, study tips, and where to go to for feedback and help. So first of all, your course, every week you'll, you'll receive another unit of work via an email with your unique link. You will need to log in, so you'll need to log in to your Online Horse College. So you go to onlinehorsecollege.com, up in the right hand corner you'll see a link that says student login. So you log in there and then that'll take you through to your login page and you'll also receive a unique link. So you need both. You need both to be able to log in and your unique link. So unless you're a full-time student, don't worry if you don't submit everything every week, but stay in touch with us. Submit what you can and we do know, you know, you've got your own personal schedule and the course is designed to be flexible so we can work around you. That's fine. If you are a full-time Centrelink student, you do need to keep your work up to date if you're on full-time benefits. Just remember that everyone completes their course according to their own personal schedule and we get that. That's fine and we work around your horses and your competitions. So the main thing is just, just to stay in touch with us and let us know what you're doing. So within your course you'll get a few different things. You'll get videos such as the one that I'm doing now which is your actual content but we'll also do different other videos that will be more specialized and we'll either take a video and comment on it or be teaching you as we're doing the video. So there'll be a few like that. Now if you find that you're getting the same video a couple of times it's because that's relevant to that area of your course and there might be different things from that video that are also relevant to the area of your course. You'll receive some audios as well and PowerPoint slides so if we're doing a presentation and we're doing it in PowerPoint we'll give you the extra slides because some students like to go through and just remember the main points from the slides as well. And then you'll get your workbooks, your PDF workbooks, they'll be in, well they'll be in PDF form and they're the ones that give uh, you know, if you're a little bit stuck on any of the questions at all, or your online quizzes, go back through your PDF workbook, because we make sure that absolutely everything is in the PDF workbook that, that you'll need to know for the quizzes, and then the other, the videos, the audios, the PowerPoint slides, that's all just supplementary knowledge. It's the same knowledge, but in a different format as well. And when you do your online assessments, if you've got Articulate Quizmaker, that's fine, you'll be able to watch videos, you'll be able to do a few few other things. But if you don't have Articulate Quizmaker, it'll still allow you to go in and do your assessment. If you do an assessment, get a question wrong, that's okay. You can refresh, you can redo your assessment. And because the questions are scrambled, you can do your assessment again and again until you get it. There's no maximum amount of times that you can take to do your assessment and there's no time that you need to wait in between each assessment. So a lot of people enjoy the fact that they can go in and say, right, I'm just going to keep working at this until I can get this particular assessment done. Now when you send them, make sure that you watch on the right hand side of your student page, there's a link that will say submitting video results, make sure you watch that because unless you've got Outlook and unless your Outlook is compatible with, that, with Articulate, you won't be able to submit them directly through email. You'll have to copy and paste the results into your email. But just watch that video, you'll be able to see that. Now with your practical assessment, each sort of subject group or, or group, you'll have some practical assessments. And those practical assessments will be you do your theory first, and then you do like a self-assessment and then peer assessment. So you'll get someone else, like a friend or something like, like that, just to make sure, just to go through the checklist with you, to make sure that you, you're going through and that you're doing it all correctly. We'll cover that a little bit more in a minute. All right. But generally, the practical assessment asks you to perform a task for yourself, for peer and for assessors. Now when you're looking for assessments, when you're sending your assessments, each group of subjects will contain your full video, your tutorials, your PowerPoint presentations, your audios, workbooks. You'll also get some extension lessons that aren't necessarily accessible, but a lot of people find that the extension lessons just help them improve their knowledge and sort of pushes them in the correct area 
okay, and because they're, they're keen on improving their knowledge anyway, they appreciate those extension lessons. Then you'll have your online assessments and your practicals. So with your online, we've already talked about it, if you've got Outlook, your answers can, and, and the Outlook's compatible, you can send them through the Articulate program. But if not, just send them through, have a look at the how to send results on the right hand side. That's a fairly important thing for you to do before you send in any results because we've had students sending in results thinking that we've received them and we haven't been able to read them. When you do send them in, you send them in and within about 48 hours we send you an email back just confirming that we've received your results but make sure you keep it a copy of everything anyway. Now when you open your quiz box, when you click on an online assessment, it'll say, would you like to resume? If it does say, would you like to resume your, where you left off? Say no, because that just means that someone else has been in there using the software. They haven't put your name and email in and they may have got some of the questions wrong. So just go, no, you want to start at the beginning of the quiz again and start at the beginning of the quiz. The assessments usually contain between about 10 and 20 questions, plus the questions, you know, you have to put in your email address and any comments and that at the end as well. So it might end up going up to about 23, 25. Now you've got your practical. When, you've, um, when you're sending in results, photocopy your results and send the originals to us uh, at Online Horse College at Ozentech Academy, 392 Bribey Island Road, Caboolture, Queensland, 4510. And that's on the back of your workbooks anyway, that address, so that should be fine. And just make sure, the main thing is that you keep a copy of everything for your own records. Now your basic horse safety, obviously you're in this course, you've been around horses and there's a few basic things that you need to know. First of all, do the theory part of your assessments. So all the theory components should be completed before attempting your practical assessments. When you're dressing around horses, make sure you're wearing the correct dress. You're working with horses, you need to minimise your risk of injury, minimise your risk of exposure to the weather, whether it's the sun or the wind or the rain or the snow. Enclosed footwear absolutely needs to be enclosed. You need to be wear riding boots or work books when you're working around them. So riding boots when you're riding, work boots or riding boots when you're working around the horses. Wearing long pants such as jodhpurs or jeans. Jodhpurs are usually better for riding, they're designed for riding and they'll protect your legs from rubbing the saddle while you're riding. If you're working in the sun, sunblock and when you're riding as well, a shirt with sleeves is essential. Just so, you know, if you do have the unfortunate, and if you are unfortunate and have a fall or brush up against something, at least you're going to have a little bit more protection. So you need that as well. And of course, helmets to be worn at all times when you're riding other things as well, gloves, okay, now for your practical activities, when you're putting your theory into practice, use a horse that's easy within your own capability, so you're not going to go and put bandages for the first time on a race horse, you're going to use a seasoned school horse or a riding horse, you, one that you know is quiet, and also too, when you're first attempting practicals, unless you're competent, unless you know you're competent, get an experienced horse person around you to supervise you, and they'll help you if there's any problems that arise. And if you're not sure about the supervisors to use or your assessors to use, of course, ask. Just contact us at Online Horse College and we'll talk to you about that and we'll make sure that the supervisor that you're using for your third-party reports or your assessments is an approved supervisor with us. Okay. Another component is working with computers. Because it's an online course, there's going to be a lot of your course it's going to revolve around using your computer and accessing the applications. So when you're working with computers, you need to take regular breaks to avoid fatigue and work in an environment. Now, you, the environment needs to be well lit, have adequate ventilation, have an appropriate and a comfortable chair, good desk height and free from distractions. And also there's some office equipment you can use, like rest rests, to rest your wrists on, to stop them getting RSI, document holders, anti-glare monitor screens, radiation reduction screens, and important for your own health and safety to make sure that your, your computer, that everything's well maintained, free from defects, and, and you're comfortable working with it.
All right, now some study tips. So study tips would be, the first one would be establish a routine. So you might set aside a particular day each week to study. You might set aside a particular time of the day for study and revision. But whatever the routine is, just establish that and stick to it. It's pretty much the same as what you do with your horses. You know, just establish a study and a routine around that. Your study environment should be free from noise, other distractions like people, radio, television. So you need to let people know that you are studying and not to contact you, not to just leave a sign on the door saying study in progress and make sure that in your study environment you've got good lighting, it's comfortable and just an overall pleasant environment. All right, next thing is just to look after yourself. Okay, so just looking after yourself, making sure that you're eating well, making sure that you're doing regular exercises. So, you know, if you're riding your horse regularly, that's good. Plenty of water, avoid sugary food, and just make sure you get enough sleep. There are your study programs. So you might have a bit of a plan and say, right, well, today is the day that I go through the workbooks. This is the day that I uh, start to work on online assessments. This is the day that I might take a video of myself. So just work out your study routine and vary it within that routine. And then once you get to a certain stage, whether you've you know finished, finished an assessment, stop and give yourself a small reward, or you've finished a section, you might want to catch up with some friends or catch a movie or whatever you, whatever you want to do, you know, go out for a long ride, give yourself a reward as you get to each stage. So each sort of milestone within your study, reward yourself for it. All right, now once you've got this, make sure you've got all your essential information prior to study, so don't get halfway through your study and then say, oh, I need that book, or I need this, or I need that, and then that interrupts your study. If you use a term planner, that will help you with your study. It'll help you with your planning that you know exactly where you are, and then if you've got something coming up, like you might have an interstate competition or something where you're going to be away for a week or two, you can, you can say, right, well, I'll do my extra study before I go or after I come back and plan it around there. And the same thing with your daily organiser. If you've got certain things that you need to do on certain days, you're not going to be able to do as much study on those days. All right, now, if you come across a problem or just any sort of concept that you're not sure of, remember that we're here to help you at Online Horse College, so just contact us there. All right, and uh, Free Horse Site, just regularly visit Free Horse Site and you know, just if you've got any comments or want to comment in any forum or anything, just go in there. All right, now when you come to your online assessments, it's really important that you read your assessment questions carefully. The amount of times that we get calls from people saying this just doesn't work, but they haven't quite read the assessment question carefully. We try and work, we try and give you a variety of assessment questions and a variety of different ways to answer so that it's not just, you know, question, answer, question, answer, or true, false, true, false all the time. So within the software, there's quite a few different types of questions. Just make sure that you know that you're ticking, you know, if it's, that you're ticking the right box. So remember we said, you know, there'd be 10 to 20 questions per quiz, and there might also be the extra ones like your email address and, you know, some comments at the end. So one of them is multiple response. That'll be the first one we talk about. So multiple response means that you need, you've got a multiple choice. So your multiple choice means you would tick one, but multiple response would mean that you, you tick several of them. So have a quick look. Make sure that you're ticking the right number of questions. All right, and usually we say that within the question anyway. All right, you might have an essay style response. So if we're doing an essay style response, we might say something like, you know, in 100 words or something. So make sure that you do have about 100 words or make sure you actually provide the information that's been asked for. You might have 100 words but not actually explain the information that we've asked for. Um, and if that happens, you'll submit it to us and we'll just have to send it back and say, look, resubmit because this wasn't answered correctly. All right, now there's a couple of different drop-down ones. You've got a uh, drop-down, so one's a drag and drop where you select your answer and drag it up or down to the appropriate sequence. The other's where you select from a list in a drop-down menu. So you'll be able to see those. They're fairly self-explanatory. All right, now when you're matching them, you can do a drag and drop, so you'll you'll get some, and you'll just pick them up and sort of pop them in the box where the, the drag and drop is. The hotspot, oh, the true faults are, are fairly self-explanatory. You just go true or false, either one or the other. Fill in the blank question. 
require you to type in an answer. Now you can do it in letters and numbers, but don't use any punctuation at all because that'll be you'll find that'll be incorrect. So something like nine, we would expect N I N E, or else we would expect the number nine. And and the software has been worked out. You can give a couple of different answers so long as they're all the same one, but no punctuation and uh, just check your spelling errors. The other thing is hotspot. Sometimes you've got to point to a specific location. We might have a photo and say, well, where is a particular point of the horse? You just need to just go to your, use your cursor, just go and point and click. The true false, we've already talked about that. All right, and then we go through. Now just make sure, the big thing is make sure you read the practical assessment criteria or read the assessment criteria. When you get into your practical assessments, you'll first of all you'll do a self-assessment. And we've got we need you to do a perform a task multiple times. If you do the self-assessments, it really analyzes your thoughts that you're going through the criteria saying, I do it that way, I do it like that, yes I've done that, yes I've done that. Before you actually ask a peer or someone else to help you, that you'd go through and do it yourself. Then the peer goes through and just goes and makes make sure that you're doing it correctly in the correct order. So a peer can just be it can be a friend, it can be you know a parent, a child, a partner, someone else that you ride with. Preferably, if they've got horse experience, that's better, and they can just give you performance on on how you're going, and they'll get you ready or help you get ready before you actually go and pay a, a, a trainer or send us in a video. So just make sure it's sort of like a double check, just to make sure before you actually go and do the real thing. You can either send us in a video or go to a trainer or assessor that's been approved or qualified by us. So you can contact us if you need to. And if you've got your instructor that is already qualified and you just need to check with us, we may say send in an assessor application, or if they're already on our approved list, we'll just say, no, they're fine. Just go ahead and use them. All right, so just check with us first. Make sure you check with us first before you go out and pay someone if you're doing your practical assessments like that. Otherwise, you can send us in the video assessments. Now remember, any feedback or help, at the end of each assessment, both the practical and the theory, we'll ask you for any feedback, okay? So anything that doesn't make sense, any spelling or grammar mistakes, any links that may not work, anything else that you think is relevant to your learning experience that you think it's just not quite right or it's a bit different to what you've learned before, let us know because if you don't know or if, if something doesn't make sense to you and it could be that we've been in and edited and we have edited it and, and not checked it ourselves or something, if it doesn't make sense to you, there's other students that it doesn't make sense to as well. So the best you know, for your whole overall experience, it really is a lot better if you just tell us if there's any mistakes or anything you don't understand. Okay, any, if you need any help at all, remember, we're here to help you. So let us know. And I've put something at the end of the workbook, although you may feel, it feels like a journey of a thousand miles in front of you, remember to enjoy it and learn from every single step. Okay, so have a great day. This is Glennis from Online Horse College and orientation video and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you. This has been another presentation from Online Horse College.